And I think that you need to have um, heart checks in place to protect yourself. So, I mean, I, I don't go out with my co-stars and have personal dinners. I don't I don't go hang out. And, and some of these people are, are my friends. They're really great people, you know, but I want to get to know their spouses. Hi friends, it's Brittany Valadez here for BravelyDaily.com. Today I am excited for you guys to see my interview with actor Jesse Hutch. Now he is in a new movie on Great American Pure Flix. Uh, you guys are going to want to check out this movie. It's called The Christmas Blessing, but I'm going to let him tell you about that. Plus so many other things we got to talk about, like his faith, how he keeps boundaries to protect his marriage and family. And let me tell you, you are going to enjoy this interview. But before we get into that interview, make sure you guys are subscribed to this channel. Of course, hit the notification bell so you can be notified each time I upload to the channel. And also follow me on social media if you haven't. Don't forget to share with all your friends. I really do appreciate it. All right, let's get into the interview. Jesse, it's so cool to meet you here. Well, virtually. I am familiar with you via your projects and your different movies. Um, but can you tell us about the latest film that you're in? I think Christmas Blessing is um, going to be a project that's a little more unique than what people are used to. So if they are familiar with me, they'll be very familiar that this is unfamiliar. I think that'll be the first thing out of the gate. So just the way that I walk, the way I talk, it's not my general uh, staccato. That's a, I, I, yeah, that's the right word for that. Uh, and the character honestly was a mixture of just me creating what I could off the page. And then as I started to do it, there was just things that would come out that like even I couldn't break the rule once it was set. I was like, whoa is weird okay and uh but i had a blast it was super fun i mean the director was great the writer was great they let me ad lib right i was very um very enthusiastic about the writing on the page and once you bring that to life you're kind of like whoo like i got an idea how about i try this and so i'm excited i think i think when you watch it uh you'll smile i almost I mean, I don't know if I could guarantee this, but every time the character Otto, which is spelled the same forward as it is backwards, comes onto screen, I think people will either smile or laugh or chuckle. That will be their general, I think, sort of response to what this character is and what he's like. All right. Okay. So with these Christmas movies, are they actually filmed in winter? Like, I know they add fake snow and a bunch of different decorations, but yeah, give us a little bit behind the scenes. I'd say like 99 out of 100 movies are not filmed during the season that you would hope they would be. Uh, I mean, and that's just the way it is in this business. Uh, it's either for just planning purposes or fiscal year end or timing, whatever. But it always ends up that you're wearing winter parkas and jackets and it's plus 70 and you're sweating and the crew's wearing shorts. And you're like, oh, it's so cold. Oh, Merry Christmas. Okay, so I'm guessing that in between takes, you're like pumping up the Christmas music to kind of get in the mood, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, well, it's kind of part of the fun too. I have done a few movies when we did film actually in the middle of the winter. And that too is interesting because you're like, it looks great, but I'm frozen. Like, I can't even talk right now. I'm like, thank you. Merry Christmas. And people are like, can you, en can you enunciate more? And you're like, yeah, like, I'm frozen. My face is frozen. And uh, you just got to roll with it. It's part of the job. Okay. You can totally tell when the movie's actually filmed in winter or at least part of it. Just by looking at the actors' mouths, I know that once you see the breath, you're like, okay, it's, it's definitely cold outside. Now, I'm obviously familiar with you based on your films. Um, but for those of us who aren't, can you give us a little bit of backstory about you um, professionally first, and then we'll get into personal later? Okay. Uh, super nutshell. I have been an actor and a stunt performer for 23 years. I train six days a week physically. I, I love action. I love comedy. I love drama. I, I have worked in the superhero world like CW, you know, Arrow and Flash and Batwoman. I've, I've worked in thrillers. I've done dramas. I've done romantic comedies, obviously. I think in that world, I've done 24 movies as the lead male. Uh, and I only know half this stuff because the fans are so amazing. They'll tell me this stuff. And I'm like, what? How many Christmas movies did I do? I had no idea. I stopped counting. And and they'll be like, yeah, look at your IMDb. It's right here. And I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. That is the name of my character. <laughs> now, you obviously have a lot of female fans because of your Christmas movies. Have you ever had any, like, weird interactions, though? 
in, in general, people are quite kind and they're, okay. they're quite nice. Uh, but yeah, there's the odd person that just like kind of freezes up or they, you know, they kind of don't know what to do or, um, and a part of that is you're kind of like, it's okay. I mean, only rarely have I had a few really interesting things. Like I've had someone reach out and, uh, they really want a picture of my feet and, uh, they'll pay me $5,000 they said. And I'm like, no, no, thanks. Um, and that's a, that's a thing. I didn't really know that, but, uh, it is. And so stuff like that, thankfully it's not in person. Somehow they got my actual email, uh, and just like keep reaching out. And I'm like, I don't know what to say to that. (laughs) I mean, a, a lot of it thankfully is in the digital realm. Uh, so, I mean, I'll get, I'll get messages. I've had people, you know, message on Instagram. And I mean, generally if it says there's a photo attached and I don't know you personally or have some kind of rapport, I just don't even click on it because it, it never, it never goes anywhere. Uh, that's good. You know what I mean? So, uh, I just want to put protections in place that protect, uh, you know, uh, my heart, my wife's heart, my, my family's hearts. And I'm always sort of learning that because as technology becomes even more crazy and fast paced, I was like, what? Like, that's a thing. Like, I don't even know. Okay. New rule. You know, <laughs> don't what? take pictures of my feet. Now I love what you said about putting up boundaries to protect your family, your wife and your children. Um, could you give us some examples of boundaries that you have in place? I definitely think you could help out so many people today. Yeah. There's a lot of boundaries. I think that you need to figure out for yourself. Uh, Cause if you don't, set your boundaries, someone else will tell you what they are. And some of those you learn the hard way mm-hmm. and that boundary gets crossed and you didn't know it existed. And then you go, Oh, <laughs> your light bulb. Ding. That's a boundary. I should have that up. I didn't really realize that. For example, uh, I was in an audition once and someone said, Hey, would you, uh, you know, make out with a horse? And I was like, like a real horse. They're like, yeah, like a real one. And I'm like, uh, no, and they're like, oh, okay, well, maybe you're not right for this role. And I'm like, no, yeah, no. Okay, thanks for having me. And I left and I was like, didn't know I had to have that boundary, right? It's just, but it, it was brought up. So just as an example, uh, on set, personal life, I think it's easy for people to, well, I don't know if it's easy. It, you can allow it to be easy. And I think that you need to have um, heart checks in place to protect yourself. So, I mean, uh, I don't go out with my co-stars and have personal dinners. I don't want to go hang out. And, and some of these people are, are my friends. They're really great people, you know, but I want to get to know their spouses. I want to know their children. I want to know their families. And I think that um, even when I go out and I do conventions, right? Christmas con, we, we go do that. There's 50,000 people come out. They're amazing people. And yet, even when people come up in line, there still has to be some form of a presence in you that comes out that says, Hey, I don't mind saying hi and here's a hug, you know, and great. But it's like, I don't follow that out. You know, I don't like, oh, I'll meet you at the booth and we'll grab a drink. I um, Just examples like that. I, I don't know. And maybe some of this is really basic to people, but I think it's just something I'm constantly aware of. And I don't know. I think God put it on my heart when I was young that you you just, you have a limit. And when you get close to that edge or, or you feel someone really trying to get personal with you, then you you got to have a guard up immediately. And I may come across, you know, like maybe I'm not a people person in that moment. Maybe people will be slightly upset, but you know, it's okay. I'm, I'm still going to bring kindness and I'm still going to be a human being, but Hey, yeah, I got to protect what I love and that's my family and God. And, and I got to, you know, protect myself sometimes too. <laughs> you know, I've, I've had people follow me into, into restrooms and I'm like, it's not cool. Like, you don't know, come into the restroom with me. Like, I'm sorry. Just, wait outside you want a picture um no thanks you know or when i'm with my kids like i'm out whatever we're at the mall we're hanging out whatever it is and most people are nice like i said as a general statement most people are pretty kind and and thoughtful but once in a while like people will film you and they try to act like they're not filming you and you're like i totally know that you're filming me and my family right now and it's just like i'm with my family if you want to say hi to me come up I'll, i'll come over there and you know but like, hey, I don't want all my kids and my wife in your picture right now. Unless you ask my wife, then go ahead. She, you can ask her and she'll say yes or no. And 
you got to respect that. You know, one of the fruits of the spirit is self-control and it's really awesome that you're practicing it. And I, I like that you set the boundary way ahead before coming to the line, because that's when we often cross it. So yeah, thank you for sharing um, your story with us. Follow, follow, follow the Holy Spirit, follow the conviction. Don't let, trust me, I had an agent early on. They said, look, you'll never make it in this business unless you do sex scenes and you know take all your clothes off. And I just knew immediately, I was like, oh, I think you're wrong. I think. I think I can do all things through Christ. He strengthens me. And there's a different way to do this. And uh, obviously he was wrong. Um, I know we have to wrap up, but can you kind of give us a little bit of summary of your faith journey and how you became a Christian? <laughs> it's 30 seconds. Okay. Here's the, here's the quick version. Uh, I, I asked the Lord into my heart when I was five, I still have that first Bible that my grandmother gave me. Um, obviously as I got older, that became more serious and real to me. My parents divorced when I was 11 that really pushed me into a deeper faith of, of sort of questioning, well, why am I here? What is this? You know, why do people do what they do? What do I do? And then I drowned to death when I was 21. And that even furthered my faith into, wow, miracles exist. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be alive. And if I am, I should, like, I should be a vegetable, to be honest with you. I shouldn't be able to talk. I shouldn't be able to walk. And yet I'm able to act and perform and bring stories to life. Uh, obviously, eventually met my wife, got married. That is one of the best things that God uses to uh, grow and develop me as as a man, as a human being, as a father, as a husband. And then obviously you start having kids and then that just pushes it even further. And you really start to be challenged in servitude. And I'm still learning that. I, I don't have it right. I'm still trying to peel that onion. Yeah. And I need God's help the whole time. <laughs> So, wow. so I'm, I, I'm an ongoing, uh, project for the Lord. I'm sure. <laughs> Welcome to the club. We are renewing our minds every single day. Jesse, I just want to say that it's been a pleasure chatting with you. I know our audience in, is enjoying this conversation and I definitely enjoyed it as well. Friends, wasn't that chat with Jesse so edifying? I mean, I was so inspired and it's encouraging when I see other men who are doing what they can to protect themselves from falling into temptation. Friends, I just want to encourage you to do the same with your own personal lives. It takes humility to admit that, you know what? None of us, no matter how Christian we are, are incapable of falling into sin. That's why we have to put up boundaries in the first place. And other people may think it's crazy, even lukewarm Christians, but it's not because you're not thinking about the now, you're thinking about the future. So I was so, so glad we had that interview. Well, friends, if you have any comments, of course, just put them in the comment section below. And also, if you haven't already, follow me on social media. I will put all of that in the description box. It's pretty much just at Brittany Valadez everywhere. Again, like this video, subscribe, share it with all your friends if you haven't. Until next time, I'm Brittany Valadez for BraveTheDaily.com. God bless and I'll see you in the next one.